Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today, I've got the fabulous Rachel with me, who I have known for a long time in the carnivore space, and I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. So hi, Rachel. Hello. Good to finally do this. It is, yes. I've been trying to track her down for literally years, actually. <laughs> but we did meet face-to-face -face at Sheffield at the conference recently. Anyway, right. So the question I ask everybody, Rachel, and here you go, I'm waiting for a brilliant story from you. Why did you become carnivore? No pressure for a brilliant story. Um, I came became carnivore kind of by accident, really. Not by accident, but a little bit because I was actually keto. So basically, after I had my last child, I became really unhealthy and I was depressed. I had anxiety and it was nothing to do with having a child. It's because I kind of um, lost my way in life, I suppose. And um, I wanted you know, some kind of outlet and, and things. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but I ended up, I was tired, very tired because I was obviously just had my fourth baby and, um, you know, babies take up, up a lot of your time and children do. So I was literally living in coffee shops, coffees and capes. So I became quite unhealthy for the first time really in my entire life. And um, I found that my, I felt quite toxic, like my um, mental health, became quite bad and that's obviously the inflammation obviously I know that now but at the time I didn't um really realize completely the big um connect with those two things yeah so um one day I just thought I've had enough of this this isn't me so I joined a gym and I was going at 4 a.m in the morning because I didn't want anyone to see me <laughs> I was so um embarrassed by the way that I'd you know, the state I'd got myself in after like a lifetime of growing up with um, a father who's a bodybuilder and, you know, having a very slim, well um, looked after mother. So um, I was embarrassed of my appearance and the way that I was behaving at the time. So I stumbled across um, keto years before when my cousin um, had a brain tumor and we was looking into her sort of treating it with that, but it was the blind leaded the blind. And I didn't know anything about keto at that time. So fast forward, I watched the magic pill and I thought, you know what, I'm going to just jump in. So I did. And I was keto for six months. And then I came across people like Sean Baker. And I was thinking, this guy's absolutely crazy. Uh, what's he talking about? Because at that time, I would count net carbs so that I could have the maximum amount of vegetables on my plate that I possibly could. So um, my um, keto was pretty clean. There was no like... Um, keto bars or anything like that I did I did used to bake so I would make the fat bombs and stuff like that but um the keto that I was doing was very clean uh but I was listening to Sean Baker Dr Baker and I was thinking this guy's absolutely insane but it actually does plant a seed so then when I next had asparagus I thought oh wait there that's made me feel a bit you know tired lethargic you know there's these side effects that I'm getting from that and it just made me pick up on things. And then I thought one day, it was the day before my daughter's birthday. And I thought, um, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to jump in. And in the beginning of my journey, I was eating um, livers every day. And I literally did it to kind of disprove the carnivore diet, thinking that um, vegetables are necessity. There's no way that I'm going to feel better. Within not long at all, um, I feel like it was within three days. I felt so amazing that I made the choice right there. Actually, I'm not going to go back. I was only meant to be doing it for like a week or two. But actually, um, I felt so amazing. The mental clarity, everything, um, no bloating. And I was getting instant results with weight loss. So I lost seven pounds in the first week and then seven pounds in the second week, which was amazing for me because I've come from keto, which is just literally me and bitch. So um, that I found quite amazing. And then I was like, no, this is my happy place. I feel really good on it. And I just kind of stuck with that. And that was in, um, so in April, it will be five years. So it's like four and a half years. Wow. Yes. So we're sort of quite similar because I'm coming up to five years. Um, I, and we were both at Meet Our Rex, weren't we, for a bit. So, yes, you know, we do go back. Um so you mentioned there's some rapid weight loss, uh, seven pounds in a week and then another seven pounds. What's what's the total weight loss from your heaviest to your lightest? I'm guessing it's going to be about 50 to 60 pounds. The reason why I'm guessing is because I stopped weighing myself, although I did weigh myself recently. Um, 
and I was nine stone nine. So um, I don't know what weight you do it, but I always do it in stone and pounds. That's okay. Yeah, stones and pounds, <laughs> um, that's all right. <laughs> um, yeah. so how how tall are you, just for context? Um, like five, six. Five, six, nine yeah, stone. Five, 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 six. Mm. All right. Okay. So that's uh, that's about 120, 130 pounds just for the Americans watching because it's 14 pounds in a stone. Right. Um, the, the, ever such a lot there. So when you had your fourth child up until then, did you think you were healthy and okay? Was it, I know you said it wasn't because of that, but you know, obviously it's a landmark that you remember. Were you, probably unwell before that or, or did something happen uh, well I had good health and then yeah. like I said my cousin went through cancer scare and for the family we kind of had family meetings about that and I was trying to get her healthy I couldn't get her on the keto diet so she the only thing that she would do is juice and at the time I was um in contact with someone that was quite famous in the juicing world and mm -hmm. um give me advice on things like that so I actually put her wrongly on a kind of juicing diet and I would make all the juices and every day I would take them to her um she's about 20 minutes away from me so I'd drive them to her so I was doing juice fasts for sometimes a month at a time and what I didn't I didn't connect the two but I was getting injuries at the gym my hair was falling out um I, I was getting memory loss um but I still had that drive and want, so I always kind of overcame those things and just carried on. But yeah, that was not a good time. And then what happened was, is um, one of the PTs at the gym, I, I was friends with a lot of people at the gym and I was going to the gym once or twice a day. So it's very fit, but obviously having all those issues from the juicing wasn't good. But one of the PTs put me on a carb cycle diet plan and it was one day high carb then medium and then um the last day would be high fat low carb and I remember discussing it with him after I've been on it for a while and I did get pretty healthy on that diet um I was discussing it with him one day and he said oh my favorite day is high carb and I was like, I can't stand high carb day I like the low carb day so it's funny that even back then that was always my preference I loved all the fats and and the meat but what was um in every day was a, a lot of meat every meal had a lot of meat so because that got brought back in I found that when I was juicing I um also it seemed to make me look older as well um as well as skinny and people would say like I've got arms like a child and things like that so there was no there was no good thing about it but then um, people would still say to me oh yeah you're like the um, pinnacle of health where well, I really wasn't <laughs> um, but yeah when the carb cycle took over and I had all that meat back in it made me feel so much better and I remember saying at the time I'm never going to juice again I don't need to do it ever again because I'm not eating anything unhealthy and that's all I need to do so I did that right up until I was pregnant with my um, youngest and then things kind of went downhill a little bit Right. Okay. So um, you saw Sean Baker about four and a half years ago and yeah. decided that you were going to go carnivore. What were your friends and family thinking of you? So when I went carnivore, my mum kind of took me to one side, sat me down and said, "I'm because she was doing no meat Mondays at the moment, at that time, by the way. <laughs> and she was saying, um, I'm really concerned. What are we going to do about your cholesterol? And, you know, things like that. But because I'd done such extensive research and I'd looked at some studies and you know, all that kind of stuff, I love looking at studies and things like that. Um, I managed to reassure her. And actually now, when I get together with my friends or family, everyone's talking about, we need to make sure we're eating more meat. And, you know, it's completely changed the dynamics. Like I used to get together with my friends and there's like a big group of us and they were all talking about um you know, the alkaline diet is amazing and that's what where the health is and all that kind of stuff. And then um, there was there was a turning point a few years back uh, when we all went out for a meal and I sat down and they were all saying, um, yeah, the animal fats and the meat, that's where it is. That's where we've got to be healthy. And I kind of looked around and I was like, well done, Rachel, well done. Because <laughs> they'd all changed what they were saying. And everyone in my friendship group that was um, vegan is now ex-vegan, you know, so... That was really good. 
Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, after four and a half years, that is about the time when people start to say, yeah, maybe you're right. Because in that period of time, they've got less healthy or fatter or more diabetic or whatever. And they've seen you get get healthier i mean that's my story as well you know basically even though i'm a lot older than you so i went kind of at 55 at 59 people don't believe but i'm 59 and i've gone back to five aside soccer and you know after 10 years away and it's it's amazing that people do start to to pay attention when you're the example but the reason i'm mentioning that is because when people watch this a lot of people will be watching and they're just thinking of starting carnivore and they will get exactly what you got like not necessarily from their mum but from somebody certainly about cholesterol that comes up ever such a lot did you have a blood test or something or was it just generally talking about cholesterol i did have a blood test and i have had some bloods done you know every now and again but I found that, um, and this is what convinced me that carnivore is where it's at, found that when I was keto, I was obsessed with the ketones and uh, every day I was pricking my finger at least once a day. And um, and I feel like that's because I didn't feel optimal because because as soon as I went carnivore, I forgot about them because I haven't used them ever since because I just feel so good. So why do I need something to tell me where my levels are when I know they must be perfectly fine because I feel amazing all the time so um I don't feel like I need to obsess about bloods and all that kind of stuff but when I was keto I felt like I I was worried about some things because I still was like oh maybe fat is a bit bad for you um so I did go and get some bloods done then but my most recent bloods that I've had done um the doctor was actually kind of shouting at me saying your blood should never look that good what like what have you been doing so because I was born with a blood disorder it's nothing Mm. um terrible but um basically um with my heritage being Greek Cypriot my nan had you know a type of thalassemia beta and alpha thalassemia so um I my levels are not meant to change they're meant to be locked in stay there and that's it but actually I did find improvement with my bloods um quite drastically which everyone's shocked about yeah and if your doctor was impressed and and asked what you were doing um when you said carnivore did they suddenly change their tune or was they like supportive um I wouldn't say supportive um it kind of nodding ahead <laughs> yes and not much else that's kind of where that was at but I mean you'd think a doctor though would be really um intrigued with that and actually want to find out exactly what has happened because they could help more patients but yes no. yeah yeah I think we're very similar I mean that's one of the things I noticed uh, in your th- in your on your social media actually that it's frustrating because i'm the same as you if i was a doctor and somebody came in and you know i literally said to them well that they shouldn't improve your blood shouldn't improve or this shouldn't improve and you told me what you were doing i would be fascinated i would i want to know and i wouldn't be dismissive because you're proof i mean literally they've they've opened up the discussion by saying your bloods are better than they should be which is which is, you know, an admission that you are doing something pretty good. I think it's also interesting that you fell for the, you know, the veg is is a necessity, I think you said, yeah, veg are a necessity. And then you had some asparagus and pointed out to yourself, well, that's not made me feel very good. And and I fell for that as well. I I genuinely felt for that. I I think we should make it clear that we're not criticizing keto. We're just comparing keto to carnivore. And I would say, you know, if you're on the fence about carnivore and you've not even done keto or low carb, um, I don't think Rachel is saying it's bad. It's just that carnivore turned out to be better for us. So um, your mental health was bad. You said you were fatigued, you were overweight, your hair was falling out. You couldn't recover from injuries. So has all of that gone? Yes. Yes, thankfully. Yeah, I I just found that it resolved all my health issues, but to a point where I've forgotten what most of my health issues were, because there's such a thing of the past, even little things like, um, you know, silly, silly little things. Like years ago, I always had to get um, a foot file and file my feet. And now the baby's soft all the time. You know, I don't ever have to do that. I haven't had to do that once since being carnival. They're just soft um little things like that skin is better I found um some reversal of aging 
when I went on the diet. Um, there's just so much that it impacted me with, um, you know, for years I suffered with bad dandruff and I kept trying to work out what it was, speaking to all the hairdressers and I found it really embarrassing. Well, then I changed the diet and that changed. Um, I used to get like water infections regularly, don't ever get that anymore. There's so many things. Um, achy knees was another one. Um, and the biggest one for me was my mental health because, you know, your, your mind takes you places. And if you feel like your mind's broken, it's a bit difficult um, to do that. You know, that is your get up and go, isn't it? Is your, is your mind and how you're feeling in yourself. And um, I don't want to pry too much, but the whole point of this is to talk to you. So was it going back to the fact that you didn't like how you looked? Was it, um, you said you was embarrassed by your appearance when you went to the gym. So you were up at 4am in the morning and go into the gym or was it more uh, dark than that? Was it, you know, a big depression? What, what actually was it, Rachel? Well, uh, yeah, I was pretty severely depressed and it felt like I had, it felt like my brain was toxic and that um, n- nothing was really very nice outside of my family life. I would make a lot of plans with people and cancel every one of them and end up just staying in. And now I couldn't be the more opposite. I'm out all the time. You know, if there's plans, I'm there. Um, I'm normally the fun one. You know, I'm not I'm not being held back by that anymore. I did, I did not want anyone to see me at the gym in the state that I'd got in because I was always known as the fit, healthy person. And then I'd gone down this route <laughs> and stayed there for at least two or three years. I think it was probably three years that I stayed like that. And then I thought, actually, I've had enough because I just didn't feel like myself anymore. And that's when I started making changes. And did, and did your partner notice this? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a massive change with everyone because <laughs> I went from staying in and not wanting to do anything to then being able to go and do whatever I like, which is nice. You know, even um, I would never have been on camera. I always avoided the camera. So when people say, have you got any pictures of you when you was at your biggest? No, I haven't. Because if anyone took pictures, I would be making them delete it for a start. If I took pictures, then I would be deleting them. I've looked back on pictures, you know, and some pictures that were taken of me where I actually felt like I was quite slim at the time. And I'm kind of like three times the size <laughs> that I am now. And um. It, yeah it's quite funny how things work but yeah there's no pictures of me at my biggest but there are some pretty awful pictures out there yeah and the reason I'm smiling away to myself here is exactly the same story here if I had to be in a picture I would stand behind a wall or something that would cover my belly or uh, you know behind a lamp post and put my head out that's that sort of thing and um yeah, there's no pictures like that. And I, I really regret that. I mean, things like um, Coach uh, Raymond at the Steak and Butter Gang, he's got these great pictures of him, you know, with a very big belly, and now he's got a six-pack. And it's it's really convincing for people that are not quite sure. So I regret not having um, an array of pictures, but there you go. It's also the truth, and that's how embarrassed we were. So, you know, I think that's, that, that's something we definitely share. Um, yesterday... I did an interview. I want to tell you this, and I'm going to relate it back to you. Um, I had somebody who lost over a hundred pounds and they had children. And one of the, you know, one of the children is now a bit more adult and grown up. And um, she asked the child, you know, can you remember when I was obese, when I was a really fat mum? And, and uh, the child went, no, I just thought of you as a mum, which I thought was lovely. You know, really, really. (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that lovely? So yeah. have you had any remarks from your children about your your happier mummy or anything like that? Or, do, or are they just typical kids and not noticing anything? Yeah, no, they do say that I'm definitely happier now. And um, obviously before I just used to hide away and it's different. But I did do, you know, we had a lot of lovely mother children time. So that was really nice. But um yeah, it's, it's, there's definitely a massive difference. And I don't think anyone anywhere near me could ever deny that. There's a huge difference. It's like night and day, you know, going from just hiding away all the time to now just wanting to experience life and actually live. You know, before I was just kind of existing, just getting through day to day, which isn't a very nice way to think or be. No, it sounds very bleak. And um, I think one of the things we both agree with, I hope so anyway, 
is this is a life changing lifestyle for so many people. You you sound like at the end of your your rope really in, in some some respects there, and you are so vibrant. One thing I would say, I didn't realize you had four children, and I mean I've seen you in the flesh and I've seen you, your photos on social media, so you can definitely get back in shape even if you've had four children. Yeah, four ch- I'm, uh, all fours at the moment, four children at the age of 40. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, you can definitely get back in shape. And people actually get a lot of messages from people and say, wow, how did you do it? This is amazing. It's not amazing. It's how we should be. It's how we're designed. You know, all the other stuff of people being obese, that's actually the abnormal part. People that actually have children and get back in shape, that's that's real. That's that's actually how we're meant to be. And that's how we're designed to be. So it, it's, it's kind of... It's really nice to have those compliments, but it's crazy at the same time because, you know, what should be normal is seen as amazing. It, you know, it's not. If you're eating the species appropriate diet, then your body will thank you for it and and, and you will thank it as well because you won't have to go through all the trauma that, you know, we went through. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, again, I'm beaming because this is what I say, for instance, with cholesterol. When somebody says it's high, I'm like, what well, says who? Maybe it's where it should be because, you know, when you eat this way, it seems to go up with everybody. So for me, it seems like it's not high, it's normal. And actually where it was, was abnormal. Of course, you've got the plant sterols as well, which have a huge impact on your cholesterol levels. They've obviously left your diet. But um, yeah, I, that is that is the best way to look at things, that the way we eat now is normal and the things that are happening, you shouldn't be celebrating in, in respect that, well, yeah, that's the way it should be. In fact, it makes total sense. Animals, you know, they have, they're have, they young and they just get on with it, don't they? Because they're eating, well, hopefully, they're eating a species-appropriate diet. So um, people will tell me off if I don't ask this question. Did you incorporate fasting into your regime? And what do you think of fasting? I didn't, actually. I've never been a huge advocate of fasting. Um, I like to eat. I, I'm really unusual in the carnivore space. My go to every day is three meals a day sometimes it might drop down to two but it depends how hungry I am so I just like to go on how I feel of what I need on that day so I like to eat intuitively so if I get up in the morning and I feel like I need more fat I'll add fats if I feel like I don't then I'll have I won't add fats and I'll eat the you know leaner meats and things like that I would I wouldn't say that I eat lean meats though there's always a lot of fat on the meats but I'll eat something that has less <laughs> than um the really high fat stuff the good stuff uh so yeah I just eat intuitively which normally lands at about three meals a day but sometimes two do you incorporate eggs what what so yeah. what is the range yeah so what do you eat in the main yeah so I eat a lot of eggs actually so sometimes in the morning I might have 10 eggs for breakfast and depending on how I feel for fat that day I might top that with loads of fat either tallow or butter and always lots of salt because I still salt I know there's a lot of people out there that don't salt anymore once they've got you know reached a few years in but I actually feel better if I've got the salt in so I carry on doing that and enjoy the taste as well um, and then I'll have some kind of meat might be burger patties for lunch and then for dinner, it, it could be same, you know, there could be chicken wings in there as well. It, it just depends. But if I'm eating chicken or eggs, I have to eat that quite big portions for it to fill me up. So if I eat chicken wings, I normally eat a kilo of chicken wings if I'm going to do that. Like with the eggs, I eat 10 eggs. And then I bump that up with the fat so that I'm, you know, kept full for a while. But to find the fat is really good for um, keeping you satiated. Yeah, I agree. What, what do you drink? Do you drink anything that's not carnivore? Boiled water, boiled water. I I do. So for the first three years of my carnivore diet, I didn't drink any alcohol or anything. But in the last year and a half, I've drunk, you know, every now and again, probably like this year, four or five times I've drunk this year. So it's not a lot. Um, And I find actually if I stick to the drinks that are um, less bad, because we know that if you're going to drink alcohol, it's not bad for you. It's not, you're not going to reach optimal health drinking alcohol. There's nothing health-wise about it. You do it for another reason, socialising or what, whatever else. Um, but if I stick to the, like the soda water and lime with my drink, then the next day I'm fine. 
funny enough. <laughs> That's good. I mean, you live in the real world. And, uh, you know, I was wondering if you were going to mention coffee or tea or anything like that. What about electrolytes? I do, I've just started using electrolytes because there's a company in the UK called Revive that got in touch and said to try their um, electrolytes. So I did. And actually, they're um, really high quality. And what I do sometimes if I'm having a boiled water or a sparkling water, I'll just put them in it and drink that. But um, obviously, I don't think that they're a complete necessity. You can just get the same results with salt. But some people don't like to salt overly and they may need something different. Um, and it could be if you're just joint, you know, just starting with the carnivore diet, most people are depleted of magnesium. So they will need some source of magnesium. So with the electrolytes, it's nice to have that kind of all in one where you can just drink that and and then you're done. But generally throughout the day, I'll either eat, eat drink, sparkling water or um, boiled water. At the moment, boiled water, because it's very cold in the UK. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I, I do. Well, that's fascinating. And I do a live stream on Sunday nights with a guy called Richard Smith, who runs the Keto Pro, uh, fueled by fat sort of um, website, which offers very good electrolytes so i might get him to send you some and then you could do a taste test and get back to us about what you think i haven't actually heard of those that's bizarre is it, are they in the uk yeah they're in the uk he's in wales actually oh wow. yeah yeah definitely yeah uh, okay um and i think that revives actually in south africa anyway we won't get they've into just that bought it here yeah they've only just brought it to the uk so it's very you know in their they're very small at the moment in the uk yeah so um I think that's that's answered all the questions about food and drink and fasting and, you know, mental health, which is great. Uh, I, I just want to check a couple of things. So your hair, is that now completely fine? It's not falling out anymore? Yeah, no, it's absolutely fine. Yeah, no problems. And I have nothing that I can report. You know, if I go out to eat somewhere and there's some kind of sauce or something on the meat that you and you can't avoid it for some reason, um, then I will know over the next few days I might wake up with a tiny headache or something. But if I'm just staying strictly carnivore and I'm able to do that, there's no health complaints whatsoever. Everything is absolutely perfect. Excellent. And you started coaching when you were at MeetRx, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was at MeetRx, first started the coaching, I think I've been carnivore for about six months. So I've been coaching for quite some time now. Um, and when I first started, I was very shy because <laughs> they were asking me back then to do a podcast with them, with um, Sean. And I, I never did until recently <laughs> because um, I've had a lot of renovations going on recently, so I couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, so I began um, as a coach and then I became the podcast editor for a couple of years. And then um, obviously the coaching platform is now um ceased to exist so just do my own thing now so you do take clients direct do you I do yeah I, I tend to take less now because my time is focused on I don't know if you know but I make um creams out of tallow and um so I've got a brand called tallow glow this here <laughs> this is my personal and I can't go anywhere without it I've got um so basically my creams are just purified tallow whipped up and then if someone wants the scent I add the scent but I don't add any carrier oils or anything like that so they're really clean and really nice and those are doing very well so um that's what I kind of want to focus on that's my baby at the moment yeah well you might have a new customer standing here actually because we use tallow products but um always looking for new suppliers. So mm -hmm. I'll drop a, a link in the description for that as well. Uh, how did you get into that then? So I used to, I started off when, you know, when you become carnivore, it makes you look at everything. It makes you look at your cleaning products. It makes you look at what you're putting on your body because you realize that the skin is absorbing everything and it's, you know, digesting it. So you, you've, uh, you just become aware of all this stuff. So when I started, when I was keto, I was using coconut oil on my face which was okay, um, but it didn't work nowhere near as well as then I switched to lard. The lard was good, but it, I didn't like the smell. And then I switched to using tallow. 
And then people started saying, oh, can you make me some? That's lovely. That's amazing. So it kind of went from one thing to the other. I put something on my socials to say, would anyone be interested in trying it if I actually put it out there? And then because I'm a bit perfectionist, I spent ages making, because I made all the designs of the stickers and and the the um, jars had to be glass because I didn't want them to be in plastic. I wanted it all to be non-toxic and really nice and yeah, so it took a while to get together, but that I've had that company for now just over a year. In September I launched last year, so that's fabulous. That's really good. So um, I'm I'm gutted because on the live stream last Sunday they were asking us, uh, you know, there was a lot of questions about our uh, our regime, Richard and I's regime. But uh, I use Tello soap, and I use uh, for my hair. I just use water with a bit of salt in. So for years I thought. I needed the gels and all that. And when I was working out or playing soccer or doing my tennis, I would constantly feel oh, a bit sticky and horrible. I can't believe it's so simple as, you know, a spoonful of uh, salt in some water and then you just spray it on it. It holds your hair. It's amazing. So I think that's brilliant that you're doing that. And I'm so glad I pinned you down after years of asking you to do this. I do get what you say, though, because I- I'm pretty shy, actually. I, d- I don't like really being on camera and uh you just have to force yourself because the multi you know faceted media which has all these different ways of telling people to eat bad food and uh that keto is rubbish and low carbs rubbish and carnivore is dangerous you just have to fight back against it and i i just feel this is the best way to do it to have some real success stories talk to like-minded people it's not an echo chamber because we're all different um and I'm very open to anybody that wants to talk to me from any walk of life that's had great success. Um, but it seems to be the ones that have the great success are carnivore or keto or low carb. I mean, it's really that simple. So, um, Rachel, I want to thank you for that. I'm going to press stop now because that was a brilliant um, interview. Is there anything that you want to say to finish up? Um, I would say if you're thinking about the carnivore diet, give it a try there's nothing to be afraid of if you really are worried about things you can always work with a coach and the coach will point you in the right direction make sure that you're covering things like your electrolytes and you know there's all these important things in the beginning that will help you succeed um faster than sometimes people just kind of jump all in and they don't really know what they're doing so um i would say that people should give it a try before dismissing it because some people just dismiss it and think cholesterol is bad and all that kind of stuff Ooh!